want to welcome everybody. Uh, this is Andy Smith from Rapid Gun Systems. I uh, wanted to thank you for joining us today for the second of a series of uh, at least five webinars that we scheduled coming up uh, each Wednesday. Uh, first one we did last week uh, was covering uh, uh, some inventory topics and uh, we're digging a little bit deeper into inventory this time, focusing on how do you do a physical inventory of your top selling items. If you weren't able to attend last week's session, uh, we do have it recorded and it's posted on uh, Counterpoint University. I'm also uh, happy to send out a copy of it. Email uh, uh, rapidcares at rapidpos.com. That email will be shown on this presentation as we go through. A uh, couple housekeeping things. Uh, you're free to ask questions if you would like to. There's a Q&A at the very bottom of your screen. If you drag your screen down to the bottom, it should pop up and let you uh, key in a question or do it through chat. Uh, I'll be reviewing those. And if, uh, if we can't answer a question, if you ask, uh, if we get a lot of questions and can't cover them all in the time, we'll follow up afterwards by email and address, and address your question specifically. Um, with that, I'd like to turn it over to our two presenters today, Greg Stubblefield and Naj Kunath. Good afternoon. This is Greg talking for uh, Rapid POS. And today, as Andy said, we're going to talk about um, how to take, um, take stock of your best sellers, in this case, your top 100 items. So traditionally, we all know that we do a uh, annual physical count, a full on annual physical count every year that is. Um, and but there's times when you just you want to maybe do an interim count or uh, what we refer to as a cycle count, meaning count just certain things. Now the counts can be uh, isolated. What you count can be isolated by category, subcategory, vendor, lots of different ways. In our uh, webinar today, we're going to focus on how to uh, isolate and count your top 100 sellers. Okay, um, so there are basically, there are three steps in the process that we're gonna go over today. The first one is to isolate what, you, what it is you wanna count by generating a report of those items. The second step is the actual count itself. And the third step is to identify what to correct. And when I say correct, we're talking about um, making actual, that is real time corrections to the quantity on hand for those items. Okay. Um, now, after, uh, after that part of the uh, webinar, uh, Naj is going to talk to you about uh, bound book, uh, a firearms process for inventory with respect to the bound book. And um, then we'll do a wrap up after that. And so with that, I'm going to pass it over to Naj. Thanks, Greg. So the first thing we want to do is generate a report for these items, right? Uh, the report that we're going to use is called this merchandise analysis report. Uh, you can find it under home inventory and then reports, and you can find that button right there. Um, and once we're in this inventory, uh, sorry, this merchandise analysis report, this is where we want to hone down um, our top 100 items. So on the leftmost slide here, um, you can see it says print top 100 items. It doesn't have to be 100. You could do your top 10 items if you'd like. Uh, but for this example, we're going to do our top 100 items. That's why we have it there. Um, and we're going to rank it by the quantity sold. So we're going to see all of our items, top 100, quantity sold. Um, in the middle here, we can see the columns that we're going to show up in the report. So we want to see the quantity sold, the cost on hand, and the quantity on hand. The first two are kind of just for your reference. The main column that we really need is that quantity on hand. That's going to be our reference point. Uh, and in our last slide, we want to make sure that we're doing item type is inventory. We don't want non-inventory items. Non-inventory items are something like, you know, nuts and bolts or a bag of candy that people grab out. You don't, you don't count all those. They're not inventory items. We want just inventory items. And the most important thing that we want is that our firearms are not in this. Um, our firearms are going to be at a separate report that we're like, like Greg said, I'm going to go over later. We, this is going to be only for your items that are non-firearms. So we need to make sure that is firearm is not equal to yes is checked. This is the perfect slide that you, you, you will want to reference. Uh, following up this, we'll see how this report is actually created. 
So once we hit preview or print this report, this is exactly how it's gonna look. Uh, on the left side, we can see the item numbers, the description, um, and then all the way to the right, we can see the quantity on hand. So when we're going through the store, we're gonna, come, we're gonna say this is the quantity on hand and this is the count we've made. Um, and what I can, the one thing about this report is that it's not gonna show any gridded items. So if you have items that are in a grid, for example, shirts that might be sold um, as small, medium, large, or different colors, we have to use this report right here. Uh, it's, it's found on the same screen as the merchandise analysis report. You can see that in the middle there. Uh, but this time we're gonna do the consolidated grid report at the top right. This is gonna be able to break down the same style that we saw before, but for gridded items. Uh, not all people use this gridded items feature, uh, but it is a good one to use if you do have something like, for example, short shirts, different sizes, different colors. You can see how it's broken down there. Um, and it's all under actually the same item number. Um, so this would be the one caveat to the other report. This would be only for gridded items. The other report would be for all items besides firearms. And Greg, why don't you go from here? All right, uh, so from there, uh, so we've identified the report and I wanna make a special mention that when we do this process, when we run this report, the items are not considered frozen or locked down in any manner, which, which uh, why when you generate the report, you wanna, know, you wanna know that you can actually go out and count these in a respectable time. Um, we suggest that you run this report and do this process uh, outside of business hours um, or when the store is not busy. Um, and if you can't do it, uh, if the store is busy, if you like way too many customers in the store and you, and you have uh, personnel to do these counts, um, find a time that you can do it because it is not a process that you want to um, you know, print out the report and then count two hours later because we're talking about our, your top 100 sellers here. Uh, so you could be selling stuff and your report would quickly um, not be accurate anymore. Uh, so the ways to handle this is, uh, for example, to uh, start, do this in small chunks, meaning focus on a small number, not the whole entire 100 items, but maybe the first 20. Um, or you could do like 20 today, 20 tomorrow. You could actually extend, extend this out over multiple days. The point we're making here is do this in doable pieces. And if you do extend it past one session, you want to rerun and reprint the report each time for each count. Um, so, because again, it's a, it's a time, there's a time factor involved here. Okay. Yeah. Remember that your inventory is dynamically shifting. You may be selling items. You may have returns. Uh, there's lots of reasons why uh, your inventory will change, especially if the store's open. So the goal here is to give you the most accurate snapshot at the time you're about to count. All right. Next slide. All right. Here we see, again, a copy of that same report that we looked at before. This time it has all the counts in it. And uh, please take note of that super fancy penmanship. Um, uh, but right now you see all the different counts. And by the way, this is sample information. So your report is gonna be a lot more accurate based on your stuff. Uh, so just remember this is demo stuff. Um, so here's the report and let's go to the next slide. Yeah, there you go. And um, from here, what we're doing here, we have a hundred items to start off with. And then as you count, you will find that some items are identical, meaning CounterPoint thinks you have 100, you go count, you do have 100. Uh, so those items you're gonna be able to cross off right off the bat, just strike them out, off the list. Um, for the remaining, you're going to, for the remaining ones, you're going to want to highlight. Um, and I recommend using different color highlighters for different things. In the case here, we have the yellow ones are highlighted for the ones that are slightly off and need to make a, a correction. So we have on like this one here, this third yellow line down, it says 267 items on hand, but we counted 266. So that would be a correction that we have to do. Um, the ones in green are the ones where there's a large discrepancy. In this case, uh, 11 on hand, and we only counted four. Um, 
if this is a big discrepancy and you've gone around your store and you really only have four, um, you might want to, you know, consider doing an entire uh, full, full on inventory and not just these cycle counts. Um, but from here, uh, let's go ahead and say that we do want to uh, enter these in these corrections in. So let's go to the next slide. Before we jump there, Greg, I did okay. want to point out that if you see a green line where there's a significant difference, um, one thing that that might flag is that you didn't find all the inventory in your store. You know, maybe you have a case somewhere that you didn't uh, count. So uh, before you uh, start thinking about needing to do a full inventory, you might want to just go back and see if you can find the missing items. Uh, you know, again, uh, the expectation should be that if you're accurately tracking your inventory in the store, you're going to see minor deviations. If you see a large deviation, it just means that the inventory wasn't necessarily found by the counter. Okay. All right. And so to make these corrections to your counterpoint system, you're going to go to, from the home menu, you're going to, you're going to go to inventory, physical count, and then you're going to use the button that says enter. That's where we're going to do these manual entries. Um, next slide, please. Now, as you enter these, you're going to be entering the ones that need corrections. You're going to be entering them one at a time. You're going to enter the item number and into the lookup. Um, and then as you enter the item numbers, you're going to get this uh, requester box that says you're about to enter count, count transaction for an item not obviously frozen. Well, this process uses uh, sort of a snapshot or frozen process as a first step. Uh, but in our case, we're kind of circumventing that a little bit because we're only doing a partial count. So for each item that we count and enter corrections to, it's going to ask us to freeze that item. So the answer is going to be yes every time. Okay, next slide. All right, and the next slide it gets to is the actual count screen. You'll notice uh, multiple counts, one through six. That is if you had it in different places, but typically you're just going to add it up on that sheet and then enter it once here. Um, and it, it, it is a requirement to enter it on this, on this, uh, first, on this first, um, first line here in the first count. That is the count on that sheet. And then that's required field. The bottom one where it says comment, that's an optional field. And then when you put your number in, you're going to want to hit the post button down in the bottom right. And um, the post button will update those quantities on hand in real time. So whatever you started with, they're going to change once you do that post. Okay. Now, um, Andy talked a little bit about this. Uh, one of the first challenges of this is that you want to do this uh, hopefully outside of business hours or when you're slow, when you're not busy. Um, the general the general thing here is that because we're doing our top 100 items, something you count and run a report for at 10 o'clock might have a way different count a few hours later. So you want to be able to generate the report, print it out, count your items and make the changes within a short period of time, say an hour or less. Um, the less time, the better, obviously. Uh, but you don't want to wait a long time. If you, if you can't do it, um, if you're too busy to do uh, the process end to end in a short amount of time, uh, consider doing it when, when it's less busy. Okay. And the folks that actually do the count, we talked about uh, making sure if you have, you know, large discrepancies to go find the rest of the stock. That's just that the people who actually do the count should have a really good sense of where all the stock is. I know where, you know, we keep some in this warehouse and this stock room under this bench in this cabinet. So that when you go to do your cycle counts, um, that you're aware of where everything is so that you can include those in your counts to see how it matches up. Um, so, before we go into this next part, um, the one thing I do want to mention about cycle counts, um, there is one sort of a downside, if you could call it a downside, to cycle counts, and that is um, you're counting specific stock, unlike the full-on inventory where you're just going into the store and counting everything you see. So just be aware of that second challenge there. 
All right, now I'm going to talk about uh, doing your firearms. Uh, so your firearms, we have to generate report like we saw earlier for um, our top 100 items. But this time we're going to actually go into a bound book report. Uh, this can be found under bound book reports, filter bound book report. Uh, I hope you're familiar with this report already because this is a great one. Um, and once we open this up, what we need to do is add this filter at the bottom that we see here. It says disposition document number is empty. Meaning, when we run this report, it's going to show us all the firearms that are not disposed, aka they should still be in your inventory. This is the most important part that we need to do here. So this is going to generate basically your quantity and your items that are on hands from your bound book. Um, and from here, we can actually go through and um, do our physical inventory. So this is going to be the image that we see uh, when we run this report. So we're going to print this out. And we can see the manufacturer, we can see the model, and we can see the serial number. Those are gonna be our primary fields that we're gonna need. Uh, we're gonna take this, go to you know where your Glocks are, and we're gonna verify and make sure that we have all of these in stock. And every time we see one, we put a check mark there and we know that we're good, we're on schedule. We wanna be very sure that all of these are in stock. This is, you know, this is the bread and butter. This is the important part. Um, when it's, not in stock, if you don't find this firearm here, we don't adjust it. We don't change our numbers. We need to figure out why it shows up in here as undisposed and not disposed. Are you guys forgetting, you know, did you ship it out to a smithing and forgot to dispose it out? Did you sell it to a customer, but you never posted the drawer? There is some reason we have to figure out why these firearms are not showing up in our actual hand, but they are showing up here. There is a reason we just need to dig down and find out why. Uh, you, you guys can check your sales reports. You can call us for help. You know, there's a way that we can find this, but one way or the other, we need to track down these firearms uh, to make sure we're all smooth. All right, uh, last part of this, uh, just to let you know that we do have um, scanners available for this process. Uh, if you're typically uh, for the cycle counts, you wouldn't need the scanners unless you're doing tons and tons of stuff. Small bits of things can generally be done just as we described in this webinar. But if you want to do the full on inventory, we do have a pool of scanners that we can rent to you and we can also give you information on how to purchase those. Um, but we do have uh, proprietary software um, that can be used, that it is used with those scanners to do this process end to end. Um, so if you want any more information on this, just use the link there to drop me an email um, and we'll get you more information. I also do have a PDF of an overview of the entire process. Um, I, at this point, don't see any questions. So if anybody has any questions, feel free to use that Q&A feature at the bottom of the Zoom to ask questions or use the chat to send me a message. You know, we covered a few things today uh, and um, I wanna thank Greg and Naj for, for doing that. Um, this is a process that is, uh, you know, a manual, as Greg mentioned, there's automated ones as well to speed that along. Um, we have an upcoming webinar next week, uh, a topic that I think a lot of people would benefit from working with promotions in CounterPoint. It's learning how to use, uh, set up promotions and special pricing, uh, even contract pricing would, uh, the information we'll convey be very useful for setting up those contract prices as well. Looks like I have uh, a couple questions coming in, so I will uh, ask those out here. Uh, from one of our attendees, they have a scanner now. Is there a way to have the inventory update live uh, they can connect uh, he can connect it to the same network as the POS network uh, David I think that question might be very specific to your scanner and your specific uh, uh, thing so I will definitely uh, get a response back to you one-on-one -on -one. Um, another customer asked could we get a PDF of the process for renting the physical count hardware sent to them and we will absolutely send that thank you um, for uh, this upcoming, in, beyond that, I think a few weeks from now, we're going to do one uh, full hour session on advanced reporting. It's going to be a great uh, way to dig into some of the specific reports, but also the techniques for working with reports, filtering them, and uh, getting valuable information out of CounterPoint. Um, 
Absolutely. If you need help as you're doing a physical count, uh, even a manual process like this, and maybe struggling to get that report or trying to figure out how to filter properly, uh, we're happy to provide one-on-one -on -one services to you. Uh, just let us know and send an email to Rapid Cares, and we will uh, set up a time where we can do one-on-one -on -one education. Um, if you're interested in any other topics for webinars, certainly give us uh, an email and let us know what you think uh, you'd like to learn out of the system. Um, one question we just got from a user is how often do people do physical counts? What's the typical shrink percentages? And so, um, uh, Greg, do you want to respond to that? Sure. Uh, so typically, the full inventory is done once a year. Um, we do have people doing it all year round, but the general uh, generally it's between the last two weeks of December through the first two weeks of January. But because a lot of people pick that time, the calendar fills up pretty fast. So if you think you're going to do it in that time, let us know as soon as you know so that we can get you into that calendar. And these are first come first serve on the rentals. If you purchase your own scanner, then you're at free will to do it whenever you, whatever works for you. Um, but generally once is the requirement. Um, multiple times is when you just want to either do the cycle count like we spoke of today, or you want to get a better sense of where your discrepancies are in your inventory, or if you have them. Yeah, I'll, I'll add the second part of that question. What is a typical shrink percentage? I think it really varies uh, largely by the store. You know, there's a lot of discipline about managing inventory. Um, and, it, you know, doing a physical count kind of shows all of the ugly parts of uh, your operation in that it might disclose that you have you have clerks ringing things up manual, you know, as a, a miscellaneous item instead of ringing up the item. You may have, uh, you know, the theft uh, that is happening uh, where you need to engage loss prevention techniques. So there's uh, there are going to be situations if you're if you uh, if you start doing a disciplined even annual count over time, you'll see. Uh, consistency in those uh, and, and if something's out of the norm you know maybe this this particular cycle on my ammo is way off from the typical adjustments that I have um, by doing the count you'll have the data to be able to report on that and see those kind of odd uh, odd issues um, do either of the other speakers have anything to offer about the typical percentages of shrink I can interject a little bit um, so we have um, this is a different vertical. We have garden centers and we did one garden center in one side of the town and they had a really low percentage of shrink. It was like, you know, three to 4%. And then we did another garden center like a week later and different company and they had a giant, <laughs> meaning in the thirties. Uh, so like there, and it wasn't so much shrinkage like being stolen, like it was more like just not good inventory accounting. So, uh, so, so if, if you do find yourself doing a count and having large discrepancies, you know, sometimes that's a good opportunity to, to signal that you may need a little consulting to dig deeper into those results and find out if there's an underlying um, thing you're not doing properly. Maybe you're not receiving inventory correctly, or maybe you're trying to track too many things and you need to consider some of the lower value items to be uh, non-inventory items instead of inventory items. There's lots of strategies for how to manage that in your store. Um, one other thing I want to just point out, we have a few more minutes and I'll, I'll ask my own question. You know, what we're focusing on here is on-hand inventory. And uh, again, I can never overemphasize uh, the different terms that we use within uh, CounterPoint and within Rapid Gun Systems. On-hand inventory is the inventory that you have. It includes inventory that might be committed to existing customer transactions. So for you gun stores that have a holding period and you're using layaways to manage through your, through your layaways, on-hand is considered 
um, uh, something that's committed on a layaway. A lot of our stores now are doing e-commerce sales uh, to kind of manage through this current health situation. Uh, for those, when an order comes into the store, uh, that ordered item is committed inventory. It's still showing up in your on hand. So just know when you're counting to include those things, even if you set that aside to be shipped out to a customer, uh, it's going to show as on hand and uh, uh, but not available. Hopefully that distinction is one that you're already well familiar with, but I always like to reinforce it. Any other questions? One thing I'd like to add real quick is that these webinars and all of our future webinars are also on our website, rapidgunsystems.com. Uh, there's gonna be a link right at the top that says free upcoming webinar. Um, and also from there, you can see all the past and future ones that are, are coming up. So this stuff is available uh, if you miss one or if you just need to see when the next one is, uh, another way of finding this. Perfect. Well, listen, thank you, everybody. Expect an email uh, with uh, a copy of the presentation, a link to access that webinar. We'll send that out even to people who registered and couldn't attend today. We really want to thank you for joining us, and we appreciate having you as customers. Uh, hopefully, you get value out of this, and certainly feel free to give us feedback. Uh, do that right at the rapidcares at, at rapidpos.com email. Thanks again, and have a great rest of the week. Thanks, everybody. Thanks everyone. Have a good one.